Welcome to part three in the video series on the Tecla template editor for reports. In part two, we basically created this uh, simple part um, report that outputs part rows in a comma separated values or comma delimited file, uh, such as a CSV file, which we can easily open up in Excel. Now, the only thing about this is that it's only for parts. So it's basically just getting information about parts only. But what if I wanted to get a report that gives me assemblies, then the parts on it, and then even maybe the bolts that are associated to those parts. In order to do that, we need to use children or nested rows here within the template editor. Okay, so starting with a fresh session of the template editor, we'll go to File, New, and we'll create a new textual template. Um, we'll go ahead and change the properties here to get rid of the margins like we showed in part two. And let's just increase the height here to be a large number. All right, we'll go ahead and save this template and we're gonna save this into our model folder like we did in the other template. And we'll just go ahead and say my nested report.rpt. Okay, so now we've got that saved. Next step is to go ahead and insert a uh, header. So we'll go to insert component header. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start inserting a variety of different rows. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a top level uh, row, which is going to be drawing for like assembly drawing. Then I'm gonna do insert components and we'll do row and we'll go ahead and do assembly. And then what we'll do is we'll say insert component row and let's go ahead and do part underneath that. And then we'll finish up with insert component row and then we'll finish up with bolt as an example. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So now you can see here in the tree view that I've got a drawing row, assembly row, part row, and bolt row. Now, if we actually ran a report of this, what would happen is the drawing row would output first, then assembly row, part row, and bolt rows would report after that. But if we actually want to report assembly, part, and bolt data based on each drawing before it goes to the next drawing, we need to go ahead and nest these. So I'm gonna select on the assembly row and I'm gonna shift it down one level. So it's now a child of the drawing row. Let's do the same thing with the part. So we'll do it twice. So that way the part row is a child of the assembly. And then we'll do bolt three times here. So that way bolts are a child of part. Okay, so this is gonna be real basic. We'll just say insert value field. And we're gonna start here on the drawing row level. So we might want something in here like the drawing name. So let's just go ahead and start with that. And then I don't want to output really anything else. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that here. And then I'm gonna actually make this distinct, um, even though I don't necessarily need to because each instance of the drawing is gonna be uh, output and usually every drawing has its own name, but I'll just go ahead and set this to distinct. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save here. Then the next thing is we've got an assembly row. So let's go ahead and say insert value field and we'll go ahead and put in the assembly position here. So I'll just get the assembly mark and let's maybe increase the number of uh, fields there to like 20 as an example. All right, so we'll just tighten up that row. And one thing I'm gonna do here, just to show the offset in the hierarchy, is I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. So that way it's very obvious to see that, you know, I'm going drawing and then assembly level to show that I'm kind of basically going down the hierarchy. All right, we'll save and then let's go ahead and do the part. So we'll say insert value field and let's go right here and let's go ahead and do the part position. So we'll do part position and let's maybe even increase that to something like 20. Okay. And then we'll finish up with bolts. So we'll say insert value field here and we'll put bolt. And I'm just gonna put a general uh, description here which uh, size or description should be in here. So let's see if there's a size value. It doesn't look like I see the size. So let's just go, oh, here we go, name short and name full. So let's just go ahead and do name full as an example. And we'll just go ahead and save that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and tighten that up by just dragging this. And now we have like basically our nested report. And we'll just put some text up here in the header just to report that this is a header. And then we'll basically just say that um, just so we know exactly what we're doing here, We'll just say text, we'll say drawing, and then we'll say that the next level is assembly. 
and the next level is part, and then the next level is bolt. Just so that way we have something to actually kind of give a description of what we're trying to output here. Now sometimes if you're selecting things and it doesn't grab up like that, um, what you can do is you can right click and you can say align or crop template uh, bottom so that way it'll actually tighten up all of the rows and make everything fit nicely um, to the rows and the actual uh, value fields or text that's within it. So let's go ahead and save and we'll run the report. Okay, so now basically I've got uh, a few beams and columns are all connected up here. And uh, I've actually created some assembly drawings as well. And so I have three general arrangement or erection drawings and uh, a few assembly drawings. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my reports. I'm going to scroll down to my uh, nested report here. And we're just going to go ahead and say show this on the dialog, so the Tecla report. And we'll say create from all. So here we go. Uh, it did exactly what I expected. It showed the drawing level. So this is a type A or assembly drawing. It gave me the assembly position, then the part position, and then it basically gave me the bolt diameter underneath there. And so you can see here, um, it just outputs a lot of that different information. Then here you can see that I actually got the sub parts. So there are some assemblies that had more than one part. This is the main part here. And then I had some other parts. Then here you can see that there were some field bolts that are associated to that. So I could distinguish between shop or field bolts if I want. But here you go, pretty basic hierarchical report. So you can uh, do nesting things from drawings to assemblies to parts and then to bolts or even studs. Um, you could also output a weld or hole information as well. Now one thing to note here is that uh, on the GA drawings or the erection drawings, it doesn't show any of the children objects that are on those. So really this ability to actually read assembly and part and model object information only works on a type A or assembly drawings. Um, type W for workshop or single part drawings, and then also cast unit drawings. Um, and then also I believe multi drawings will output the assemblies that are on those drawings. But uh, GA drawings or erection drawings, you can't get the children parts or objects that are on those drawings. Now, one thing that I might do here is that when we're reading an assembly drawing, basically what's happening is we're only getting the output or the report of one instance of that piece mark or that assembly on the job. And so if I actually wanted to get a, a quantity of all of the objects in the, the model or all the assemblies that have that same mark that are associated to that drawing, then I actually have to use a model total field. And so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to actually insert here a value field and I'm going to put this right after this on the assembly level, and I'm just going to go ahead and look for a model total value. So here it is, number of similar objects in the model with the same mark. So I'm not actually going to do the number like I did in the previous part two video, where I just added up and summarized uh, the quantities um, per row. The reason, again, I'm doing this is because on the drawing, the assembly drawing is going to only report one instance of that assembly mark that's associated to that drawing. And if you want to get a total quantity of those assemblies in your report, you have to use the model total field instead of the number field. All right, so we've got that in, uh, set up there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come in here and say value field. And I might actually do this on the uh, part as well. So let's see if we have a model total here for that. But you have to be careful here, right? So do I really want a model total in this particular case, or do I really want a number of parts that are on this particular assembly and multiply those by the model total value of the assembly marks? So again, this is this is some of the nuances of making bill of material and nested type reports. So let's just go ahead and say number here instead of like a model total. So I'm going to say number, and on these rows we do have set this we have set this to combine, right? So it's going to combine all like parts. And we want this to sum, uh, summarize values across the rows. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that. And so this is just kind of important. I want to start out with this. Now, I'm not going to multiply this at first um, by the assembly total, um, which means that I might have something that's going to give me uh, the wrong quantity for the total amount of assemblies. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'll go back to the model and report this and see what we get. Okay, so we're back here in the model, and if I say create from all, here you're going to see a lot of model totals of one. Now the reason why I've got model totals of one is because really I don't have I, I only applied some of the connections to some of these pieces, and none of these have the same piece mark. So there truly really is only a quantity of one. 
And so we've got, uh, you know, even on the submaterials, there's not multiple quantities of those. Although here on P3, you can see that I actually do have a multiple quantity of three. Now, let's say uh, that there were three of these assemblies. What I'm worried about is the way I've done the report right now is even if this said three, current, this would actually still output only one because I'm getting the model total of all the B1013s, but I didn't multiply these specific totals just for this assembly by the model total. So I need to do that. Okay, so here's a good example of that. I made something very simple here. Three identical main parts or assemblies, and then I put uh, two plates on there that are gonna get the same piece mark on all three of the assemblies. So I have a model total of three assemblies, and then I've got uh, two parts per assembly, right? So if I actually come on here, let's go ahead and update this drawing um, just so that way everything's correct. I should see that a total of quantity of three assemblies on that drawing. But again, when I open up this drawing, only one instance of the assembly is actually being drawn here. So I see three beams. And if you actually look at this, this is kind of what we're trying to achieve. We see a model total quantity of three. And then even though there's only two P6s per assembly, we want the total quantity of P6s required for all these assemblies. That's what we want to essentially achieve in our report as well. So let's go ahead and actually select only that drawing, so that B1, and let's run a report from selected and see what we get here. So take a look, we've got uh, a B1, and we see that there are three model total assembly instances. We've got one main part, and then two P6s per assembly. But again, this isn't right. This doesn't match what we just saw on the drawing. We want to get the model total of that, right? So if we want to do that, then we'll just go back to the template editor and we'll multiply the values out. Okay, so now the fastest way to do that is if we actually come in here to the part uh, number field here where we're summing, summing the values for the quantities. We're just going to go to the formula and we're going to do a multiplication and we'll do a get value. So we'll just do that so that way we can get the syntax. We'll put our cursor in between the quotes there, quotes there, and we'll just go ahead and say select attribute. Now here's where we're gonna actually have to go back up to the model total real fast. So let's get to the assembly object. So we're going up one level, uh, the assembly that this part is uh, a part of, and we're gonna look for that model total here. So there's the model total. So here's what I'm doing. I'm taking the current uh, total number of parts that have this part mark, and I'm multiplying it out by the model total for this assembly mark. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check. Everything looks good syntax wise. We'll then go ahead and save this and go back to the model. Okay, so now we're back in the model and I actually made a quantity of four uh, new assemblies that have the same two parts on the original assembly on it um, and they have the same part mark. And I made four of these versus three so that way we can just double check that the totals are working correctly. So if I go back to my drawing list, I have uh, two drawings here, a B1 and a B2, and I'm just going to go ahead and say create from selected. Now when I do this, you'll see that the quantities are now correct. We have three B1s and we have four B2s. And then from a model total point of view, we have a quantity of three of a main part of that assembly and four of the main part of that assembly. And we have two parts, P6s, uh, per uh, B, uh, each assembly. And so here for the quantity of four B2s multiplied by two, we get the eight. And then here up here where we have three B1s times two, we get six. So now we can see that the model total and quantities are correctly working. Now this logic that you're seeing me do here on the reports um, for assemblies that are nested underneath a drawing, this works very similar in the graphical templates as well when you're making bill of materials. Basically the bill of materials for a graphical template are reporting out again the instance of that assembly or the instance of that single part that exists on that drawing where the template is being displayed. So a lot of the same logic and knowledge that you're learning here can also be applied to graphical templates as well. All right, well that concludes our training here on using the Tecla Template Editor uh, to generate your own customized reports.